Time for What's Hot. We talk about stories that have all of us talking. We're joined today uh, by Jeff Wagner. We're <laughs> minus one today, so the three of us are going to have to handle these topics. And you still have me stuck in the newsroom now. Right. I know. Well, no. you know. Wow, okay. Two against one. All right. Mm -hmm. Bring it on. <laughs> I could say something, but I won't. The DEA <laughs> has access to a massive database of cell phone records. The federal government database dates back 25 years. Uh, we're talking AT&T phone records. The drug enforcement agents use that to track phone calls of suspected drug dealers. Should the DEA have access to phone calls? I guess the better question is, did Jeff Wagner <laughs> ever have access yeah. to those records as a former well, federal prosecutor? Well, I, absolutely. Now, I mean, what... The, the difference is that these are records that are actually maintained by the phone company. But when I was chasing drug dealers back in another life, what we would routinely do is, because there's no right to privacy in the phone numbers that get dialed, what we would routinely do is go get court orders saying, hey, give us access to the, the phone numbers that are being dialed from one phone to another. We used to put together cases based on this. So this is this is not new. What's a little bit new is apparently there's now ATT and T agents, um, employees, who actually work in DEA offices, so you don't have to run down to the office and actually give them the subpoena. But I have no trouble with this at all. You're not listening to the phone calls. You're just listening. You're seeing what numbers were called by whom. So, again, for the average person that sees this and thinks, yeah, really crossing the line on privacy for me, what say you? Well, I, first of all, I mean, again, it's not the conversations. And, and here's how this ends up getting used. Let us say, for the sake of argument, that, Courtney, somebody is investigating you because we think you're a drug dealer. Now, we know that's not the case, but we get a hold of your cell phone records, and it turns out that you've made 2,000 calls to a known drug dealer down in South Florida. Well, that is evidence. Do we know exactly what you talked about? No, but it's evidence that you can use to help put together the case. And like I say, that's that's been around. I started chasing dope peddlers in 82, and you know that's what we've been doing since then. Yeah, it's amazing what we can learn from our phone records and our phone right. calls, and, and law enforcement knows that, so they're going to use that as well. We're going to wrap up that topic and move on coming up. What's hot and our viewers choice topic of the day. We're now joined by author and speaker Dasha Kelly and Jeff Wagner of 620 WTMJ. Well, there's a new banking fee. Banks now want you to pay for banking the old fashioned way, talking to a teller inside the bank. Speaking with a teller face to face is becoming a thing of the past as more and more people bank online. Should banks charge you a fee? for seeing a teller. I think that this will just force it into becoming a complete thing of the past. People well, will go online or they'll, they'll make a phone call instead of paying the fee. Well, I guess see, here, here's the way I think to look at the question. The question is, it, in exchange for doing this, will they lower other yeah, fees? That's right. going to be the question. Not going to my happen. guess, no. right? My, my guess is no, right? So it's not really like, hey, it's going to be cheaper. Your checking account costs are going to go down. I don't see that happening. And I think there's a lot of times people like to interact with the tellers. I, I think this would be a bad competitive move. Absolutely. I absolutely think this is a horrible idea. It's supposed to be optional, being able to bank online and do all of your banking electronically. I should not have to have the option of speaking to a human being about my money that you're holding behind those metal doors. And of course, having someone be able to help you through these processes and having that relationship with a banker, that should not be so old fashioned. So we, I shouldn't have to pay for that. Yeah. So hopefully they'll come up with something that gives us a give and take. Yeah, I, I do find at times that I still need to go in sure. occasionally and uh, yeah. would like to know that it's not going to cost me to do that. Right. You know, and I think, again, it's a competitive thing. I think if some of the big banks end up going to this, that's where you have some of the other banks that say, hey, wait a second, we're not going to charge you. Your bags fly free and you can talk to a teller and mm. we'll cost you any dough. All right. Let's go to the lightning round, our third topic. Imagine taking a pill that can send a text from inside your body. Scientists are about to put a new digital pill to the test. The pill has a sensor. It sends a text or email to doctors and relatives showing the <laughs> pill has been taken. Would you try this digital pill? Yes. I, that's, really? Yeah. It's a little spooky really? that something inside your body is like communicating with the outer world. I don't want anything inside my body sending emails. I'm not sure how comfortable <laughs> I am with that as an idea. But when they make the case that it's something that's going to be helpful for elderly patients that may forget to take their medication in a timely fashion or in the right dosage, the argument makes a little bit more sense. But of course, I can't help but be nervous about how horribly that might go wrong. I had um, 
Okay, the other day I had a big Mexican dinner. It was sending my body a message. There's no question <laughs> yes. about it. But it was just exclusively to me, and I think that's pretty much the way it's it's going to stay. Nobody else needs to know about that stuff. Well, I, I, I'll go the old-fashioned way. My and, question is, is what component? I, I don't know. Is the pill safe? I mean. Yeah, I mean, I think it, the, the technology is probably there. I know, uh, just because I'm a runner, that they actually have these things where you can swallow something to take the temperature inside your stomach, so it has to read out. And just for the record, Jeff, I wouldn't take this while I'm driving, so it would send a text <laughs> message to my doctor. Because then you'd be texting and driving. <laughs> then you'd be in trouble. Got right. it. So, all right, we'll leave it at that. Uh, the What's Hot discussion continues online. Find out, you can find that page at tmj4.com slash hot.